Hi everyone, so today's video is a little bit different. So I have a whole bunch of footage from a bunch of various old projects over the past year or so, um, and it's not really enough footage to justify having a full video dedicated specifically to each one project, um, but I definitely put effort into filming parts of it. So I'm going to kind of splice it all together um, and give you kind of a mishmash of a little bit of everything. So the first project that you're going to see is a purple uh, dress that I made to go to my cousin's wedding. Um, I can't put that on for you right now because I have gained so much weight in the past year that I can't get into it, which is really frustrating. Um, yeah, we're not going to get into that right now because I'm still really angry about it. The second project that you're going to see is this winter cape that I made. Um, I got this nice kind of flannel with a blue metallic thread in the garment district when I went to New York last year. Um, and it has a really fun lining because how else would people know that I'm actually a fish nerd? So you'll get to see how I make this. And the final project, I think it's the final one, is one that I actually worked on today, which is a mock-up for Simplicity 8747. Because um, I have a project in mind with some more fabric that I got at the Garment District last year. Um, but now that the weather's starting to cool down, I actually want to start getting to work on it. And I'm not 100% sure what I want to do with the pattern. i talk about it a little bit later. Um, so I thought I would go ahead and do a quick mock-up and just sew this together real quick and see how it looks. So if any of those projects interest you, um, I'll go ahead and link a, uh, or list some timestamps right here, probably, of all the projects. So if you just want to skip to one or the other, um, here they are. And if any of those interest you, or if all of them interest you, just keep on watching. Hi everyone! So I have a wedding coming up pretty soon that I'm going to go to, and I need a dress to wear to it. So uh, what I'm going to do is something that I think is going to be a really fun little challenge. So I have a dress that I really, really like, but it's black. I'm wearing it right now. Uh, and in my family, we're, we're a little traditional. We do not wear black to weddings. We do not. It's just, it's a thing that we do not do. So obviously I can't wear this dress as is, but I really like how it fits. I like the cut of it. I like the silhouette of it. I just wish it was in a different color. So I am attempting to recreate this dress and remake this dress, but in a different color. So um, let me show you what I've got done so far. All right, so here's the dress that I'm gonna try to recreate. Uh, I'm gonna make a couple of changes to it because it is gonna be a church wedding. Um, so I might not have the slit here. I might put the slit in the back instead. And I think I'm gonna have like a little extra strap of fabric all the way around uh, for the off the sleeve and not just have it off the sleeve. I don't know yet, haven't completely decided, but let me show you the fabric I got. So this was the original fabric I was gonna make it out of. It is a stretch crushed velvet. And I got a yard of this in remnants, which is what kind of inspired me to make this project. And I absolutely loved it, but when I went back to go get another yard of it, they didn't have this exact color. They had something really similar, but it wasn't really exact, and I would have had to buy two yards of it anyway. So I figured if I was gonna buy two yards of a different color, I might as well go for a color I really, really wanted. So I found this really pretty, like, eggplant purple uh, crushed velvet. It's the same fabric, just a different color. So I went ahead and got two yards of this. Uh, this is already pre-washed and I hung it up to dry overnight. So that's ready to go. So all I've really done so far is I'm trying to make a pattern out of the existing dress. Uh, it's not going <laughs> that great, but I don't... It's a really simple dress. There's not really a whole lot of complicated draping going on. So it's just a front panel, a side panel, a front side panel, and one back panel. Um, so I just put the dress on real quick to see how it fits and any changes I wanted to make. So I'm probably uh, going to keep it sizing pretty consistent, but I am going to add an inch and a half to the bottom of all of these pieces so that it will sit on my actual waist. Uh, so I'm probably going to cut out the lining first. I have some like swimsuit uh, nude lining that I'm gonna use to line the bodice of this with. So I might not show you that because it's kind of see-through, but I'm gonna cut out the lining and put the lining together first so that I can kind of test out the fit there before I cut it out of the main fabric. So I'm going to start there and see what happens. 
So here I have the lining all cut out and sewn together. So when I cut out the pieces, I had to add a half inch seam allowance. Um, and also I added two inches to the bottom instead of one and a half because I needed one and a half without the seam allowance. So I just added two inches to the bottom to give me a nice um, length. So I tried it on as best I could and I like how it fits. I like how it sits. I like the length of everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it, cut out the main fabric and sew that together. I might not put the lining on just yet because I'm kind of thinking that if I do the ruffle around the shoulders, I might want to attach it when I attach the lining to the main fabric so that everything's kind of tucked away into itself. So I'm gonna, you know, one step at a time, I'm gonna get the bodice cut out and then figure out what's. All right, so here's my bodice cut out. It looks a lot more burgundy than it is, but I promise it's really, really purple. Um, so what I went ahead and did, I promise I did it nicer than it's laid out, is I measured the length along the top and it's 29 and a half inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut myself a ruffle and it's gonna be 20, yeah, 29 and a half inches like straight across this way. And then I'm gonna like do that and then just kind of wing it. Um, and that's gonna get sewn along the top and I think I'm gonna add that in when I install the lining. So I think that's going to be my next step because I'm realizing now that two yards is way more fabric than I actually needed so I feel good about playing around with these things and trying new things and experimenting. So I'm going to go do that. All right, so my trapezoid that I just talked about does not work. I kind of anticipated that. Um, but I think I figured out what I need to do. I think what I basically need to do is make a circle skirt, but you know, like a six inch long circle skirt. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut the skirt out or the actual skirt of the dress out first, just so that I make sure that I have enough fabric for that. Uh, and then I'm probably gonna try to work with what I have left over uh, for the circle skirt. And I don't know, maybe I'll use this for a, a sash or a bow or something. I'll figure something out. All right, so I have these skirts uh, assembled. I don't remember the last time I updated everyone, uh, but here's the finished skirt. I'm probably um, actually gonna take it in a little bit from here down just to give it a little bit more of a uh, pencil shape, um, but I really like it. Uh, I also have my little circle peplum thing um, cut out. So I actually have to go somewhere right now, but I will pick this back up another day. So I'm super happy with the project. All right, so I don't remember where I left off on this because I took a break for a couple weeks. I got my nails done. Um, but yeah, so I went to New York for a couple of days, so this kind of got put back on the back burner. But I have to go leave for this wedding uh, in... A little bit yeah exactly a week actually so I need to get this dress done so I have I cut out a uh, like a mini circle skirt uh, for the ruffle that's gonna go along the top and I realized I didn't measure um, all the way across my shoulders I just measured the top of this when I was making the skirt so it's just gonna get attached to this um, and I think I'm gonna make some like spaghetti straps or some really thin straps out of the same material just to hold the dress up um, because I haven't decided if I want to do the like off the shoulder yet. Uh, anyway, here I have my skirt. I labeled the uh, top with a with a T. So the way that I actually decided to do the skirt was it's straight across in the front and it's just kind of plain. But I went ahead, um, I also added a couple inches from the original skirt and I just left the back open. So that's gonna be my slit that's gonna help me walk around. So I figured leaving that open in the back would probably look a little bit more classy and church appropriate than leaving it open in the front. So I'm going to get the top sewn onto this. Yeah, this, this is the top. I'm gonna get this sewn onto the skirt. Um, and then I think I'm gonna cut out the straps so that I can sew the straps and this ruffle on when I install the lining, uh, which this is the lining actually, yeah. So I'm gonna try to reconvene my thoughts and figure out where everything is and I'll check in once, once that's done. All right, so here are the straps. Basically, I just um, cut out 
probably about a uh, like a one and a half inch strip of fabric, folded it, and then sewed it and turned it right inside out. So these are the two straps I have. I'm probably going to cool iron them um, later today to get them to lie flat. So my sewing machine is, needs a timeout. It's breaking my thread uh, after about 30 seconds of sewing, so I'm probably going to have to physically get in there and clean it out and look and see what the problem is. So I think I'm done sewing for today just to save my sanity. So I went ahead and I put the dress on. It's just pinned to my bra and the zipper's not in, so that's the back um, flopping around. So I have this so that I can see where I want to put the strap so I can get that pinned in real quick. Um, and then I'm going to pin that and I'm going to pin the ruffle on um, and like I said, I don't think I'm actually going to sew it for the rest of the day because I need to get in my machine and figure out what's going on. Um, so I have, you know, pretty much this done. That's a pin in the back holding it together. Um, yeah, I like how it's coming together so far. I might um, slim out the bottom down here a little bit more to give it more of a pencil shape. Um, I got my Spanx on because somehow I managed to gain 10 pounds in the past month. Uh, so, you know, not that I have any idea how that happens. Not a single clue. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to get all that pinned and take my machine apart to hopefully fix it and then pick this back up in two more days. Um, let's start off with this is a dress that I was making. Here it is finished. Let's see if I can. So hopefully that'll make it look a little better. So I have, I wound up doing a little like peplum up top and it looks better admittedly with Spanx on and there's the side and there's the back. You can see I put that, maybe that slit in the back and it helps me walk. So I really like this dress. I've worn it a couple times already out to events and this is kind of my new go-to fancy party dress. Um, so I really like how this came out. I probably didn't need to add as much fabric as I did to the midsection, but that's okay. I'm not too concerned about it. So I'm going through my footage and I just realized I didn't film any sort of intro or even talk remotely about what I'm doing in this video, but I'm making a winter cape. Um, I'm following Angela Clayton's tutorial and I'll go ahead and link that below. Um, so yeah, let's just jump right into it. So this is the fabric I'm working with. I'm not entirely sure uh, what it is, but it's pretty and it has this plaid pattern. And I hope this is picking up on camera, but the blue thread in the middle is actually metallic. Um, so this is going to be the outside of the cape. And for the lining, I have a couple of options. So I was at Joann's a couple of weeks ago and I saw this um, that had a bunch of whales on it and I thought it was super cute and I had been thinking about it for a week So I remembered that I was working on this cape So I went back and got it for this purpose, but also when I was there I found this um, Which I feel like the colors would match a little bit better and it has sharks on it Which I mean either way my little marine biologist self would be very happy, but I'm kind of leaning towards this one um, At the end of the day, it really won't matter because the lining won't be seen um, but the main thing that I'm debating right now is I really wanted a fur, faux fur collar on it. And when I saw this in Remnants at Joann's, that's kind of what my, uh, my mind immediately jumped to this project. It's a faux rabbit. So it's kind of a gray with a really dark base to it. And then when I was going through my stash the other day, I actually found this faux mink. Um, and I feel like this also would look really good. I just don't know really which one I would want. Um, so I have those options and I also have some buttons. So I hadn't looked at this fabric in a while when I was going to get notions for it. So I remembered the uh, metallic being gold instead of blue. So I was going for gold buttons. So I think it'll really determine. So I picked some gold ones. Um, let me try to get a better view of those. Not entirely working too well, but I think based on whatever fur I do will be the decision maker for this, but I don't know. Um, I still have to draft the pattern first, so I'm going to do that. Uh, and my boyfriend is actually really good at aesthetic decisions, so I might ask him his input and see what he has to say. So my regular mock-up material, because um, I haven't had to make a mock-up of anything in a very long time, is buried underneath um, about 
three years of fabric hoarding. So I actually found this, which is literally just a twin sized flat bed sheet uh, that I was going to use for another project, a project that's actually in a bag over here that I picked a, a real fabric for. Yeah, so I don't need this for that project anymore. So I'm going to be using this for my mock-up for this piece. Um, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about filming it because I don't have a whole lot of room in my room anymore because I got some new pieces of furniture. Um, so I'm just basically going to make a circle skirt real quick out of this and come back when I'm done. So here's basically what I have so far. Um, it's hard to tell but there was a nice fold in the crease that I just pinned to the front of my shirt to try to keep it as straight as possible. Um, I did have to go ahead and just make a little cut here so that I could get my head into the thing. Oh, don't look at my face. So in terms of cutting out or marking where I wanted this armhole, I just kind of, see, I, I kind of just like bunched up my elbow and let the fabric fall over the crease and kind of the top of that is where I decided the top was gonna be. I went up um, a little bit, probably about three quarters of an inch, and then I just kind of played around with the length for how like long this way it was until I found something that felt comfortable. So now that I'm playing with it um, and I'm looking around, I actually, I hope you can see that, the back is really, really full and I'm actually living for it. I really like how full and extra and how much fabric there is in the back. So I think I'm gonna keep the back super full. Um, now in the front, I don't think I need all of this in the front, so I went ahead and I marked um, what should be a good center line uh, right there. I just kind of stuck my arm out directly side and drew on top. So I, uh, it will probably take me an embarrassing long amount of time to figure out exactly how to mark taking out some fabric from the front, uh, but I definitely want to keep all of that fullness in the back. So I will figure some things out and play around with my pins and we'll pretend that I knew how to do it and it took way less time than it actually did. Okay, so that surprisingly genuinely didn't take a whole lot of time. Um, so what I did was I just kind of arbitrarily um, marked a triangle with pins and I wound up taking, let's see if you can see this. Uh, not really, I wound up taking about that much doubled, that's folded over. So that would probably be about 12 inches, so about a foot of fabric. Um, and just kind of folded it in. I folded it to match a seam that Angie said would be uh, super helpful with hiding this slit here. So I just kind of made a seam or what would be a seam right there and it kind of worked out. Also in doing that the uh, front line kind of looked a little weird and a little bit bulkier than I wanted so I just kind of shifted the front over and it's not flowing too well because it's pinned down to my shirt to keep it uh, straight, but I really like this. So now I think the next step is um, I'm going to cut this all apart, get my pattern paper that is really just brown packing paper and sketch out a pattern. Wait, I lied. So the next thing I actually have to do is mark the hem all the way around so that I can have an even hem. So um, I saw a Pinterest thing that I was gonna do, but it seems kind of messy where you take like a um, like a piece of string and you measure it evenly across a door frame and you coat it in like baby powder or cornstarch or flour or something and you just kind of rotate around and it'll mark your hem for you. So I wanted to try that but that seems kind of messy and quite frankly I don't feel like swiffering my floor right now even though I'm gonna have to in like 10 minutes when I cut the real fabric out. Um, Either way, that sounds like a lot of measuring that I don't really want to do right now. So instead, I noticed that the length I want this is about even with the height of this little rolling cart. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Sharpie and I'm going to duct tape it right here so it's really nice and secure. And then I'm just gonna get right next to it and spin around and uh, hopefully that'll also work. We'll see. So I know it's kind of hard to see because of all of the stuff going on in the background, but here's my Sharpie. It is duct tape on. It feels pretty secure. So um, gonna uncap it and let's see if this works. Because remember, I try the stupid stuff so you don't have to. All right, let's see. Just kind of shake it out. I, I want to make sure that I'm standing up as straight as I can and that I'm not like 
tilting to one side, so I'm just going to kind of start here. Unfortunately, my Sharpie was kind of running out of ink. Ah, that looks like that might work. All right, so the back's going to be interesting. All right, so I'm kind of pleasantly surprised with how this turned out. I don't know if it's the most efficient way of marking an even hem, but it works. I would probably give it like a like a 6 out of 10, probably. So now what I'm going to do is get this cut and get this over to my pattern paper and make a pattern. So this is the cape that I made. I really, really like it. Um, the only thing I wish it did different is I wish that this front panel from here to here was a little bit wider because whenever I put my arms through the slits and move around, it pops open a lot and I don't really like that too much. So the back has a lot of volume in it. I don't know if I can really show you. Um, the back is almost a half circle skirt in itself, so... I really like it. I might wind up putting some weights or something to weigh down this hem a little bit because since there's so much fabric in the back, it's really heavy and it pulls back all the time and chokes me and I don't like that. So I want to kind of pull it forward a little bit. So I wound up not putting a collar on yet because I wanted to hurry up and finish this cape so I could wear it while winter was still in Florida for a little bit. But I think what I decided is I'm going to do like a uh, detachable neckline kind of thing. So I have two fabrics that I really like and I couldn't decide between uh, to make a collar out of. So I'm going to use both the fake uh, mink, which is the brown one, and the fake rabbit, which is the gray one. And I'm going to make two collars out of that. But also um, I'm going to make like a detachable hood. Um, out of this material that I should have enough left over to do. So I'm going to make a detachable hood um, and I'm going to line that with, uh, I haven't decided which, uh, which fake fur yet, but I'll figure it out when I get there. So I'm probably just going to attach that with some snaps along the inside. Um, and I'll show you the lining real quick. So I have sharks in the back and whales in the front. So it's one of those party on, uh, party on the inside, serious business on the outside. So yeah, that's what I've been working on for a while now, and now I can probably finally finish this uh, this video up. Hi everyone! So today I'm going to do something that I almost never do. I'm going to be making a mock-up. I know. Shocking. So, a little bit of a story behind this project. Uh, last year I went to the uh, Met in New York City because I wanted to see um, their Heavenly Bodies exhibit, which is fashion inspired by the Catholic imagination. And I really love unique fashion and I absolutely love things inspired by Catholicism. I'm, I am Catholic. Um, I love kind of the history behind it. I love the aesthetic, especially all the old like Gothic cathedrals. Um, I'm, I identify more as like a bad Catholic in that I still pray to all my saints. I don't eat meat on Fridays during Lent, but I don't really go to church anymore. I'm more of a party Catholic because like there are the boring Catholics um, that are, you know, stuffy and uptight. And then there's the party Catholics who remember that Jesus's first miracle was literally turning water into wine at a wedding because they ran out. So like, yeah, I'm a party Catholic. Anyway, so while I was up there, I also took the opportunity to go to the garment district for the very first time. And I picked up this fabric. This was before I really paid attention to what fabric was. I'll show you this side. Um, so it was very obvious that the garment district was cashing in on the uh, Catholic theme of everything because I saw variations of this fabric multiple times in almost every store that I went to. So I finally settled on this one, which is black and gold, which is very near and dear to my New Orleans heart. Um, I also love the little crosses on it. I love the detail on it. So I figured this would make a really cute jacket. So my original idea was I wanted to make like kind of a blazer, but I wanted it to have like almost a pleated kind of ruffled back to it over the butt. Um, and also while I was there, I found these little epaulettes. They don't match perfectly, so I don't know if I'm going to wind up using them, uh, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see if I can kind of tie these together. 
But anyway, so I'm having trouble finding the actual pattern that I want for a blazer. So I'm kind of thinking I need to draft it and I need to kind of adjust maybe a couple of patterns. And last year when I made like a winter cloak, I wound up finishing it immediately after Florida decided that it was done with winter for the year. Uh, so I want to get started on this early. Today is October 2nd. So this is what I'm going to be making today. I have Simplicity 8747. So I had a couple of patterns that I picked for this project. This was kind of the first one I grabbed, which was McCall's uh, M7513. Um, and I like how this has like the pleating on the back and how this looks more like a formal blazer, but I really am not a fan of how the uh, peplum looks and how this seam in the middle looks. And I found a tutorial um, already on YouTube of somebody doing like a super in-depth making of, so I'm probably not going to do that for this one. I'll go ahead and link that below if you're interested. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of interested in this one and I like this one. But I really like the seaming on this one better. Um, I like how it's kind of, not true princess seams, but it's got these seams and it's all one solid piece down the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make both of these. I have some mock-up fabric that I'll show you in a minute because it's at the bottom of my pile. Um, and I'm just going to real quick get an idea of what these are going to look like when they're actually made and when I'm actually wearing them so I can kind of pick and choose which one I like better and what parts of one I like better because I might have to do like a little bit of a hybrid between the two. So that's what I'm going to be working on today. Um, so if you're interested in that, keep on watching. So here's the fabric that I have. It has this nice little flower print on it. Uh, anyway, this was on sale. So with all the sales and clearance deals and all that, it wound up being like $2 a yard. So I just asked for whatever was left on the bolt. Um, so I have four and a half yards, so I think that was a good deal. So that's going to be my mock-up fabric today. And I'm looking over at the pattern, and I don't think I'm going to do the facings. Um, I just don't think that's really necessary for a mock-up because, you know, I'm not going to have to actually put in, like, buttons or anything in this. I just want to see how the main body kind of fits and goes together and see what the shape kind of looks like. So I think this will actually go together really quickly, and I might not go into too much detail about this here. I might do kind of a more in-depth one when I make my final jacket because I'm probably going to have to do alterations and stuff to it. So I think this might actually wind up becoming like a, um unfinished bits or blog so I'm going to go ahead and get some of these pieces cut out. I'll let you know which ones I do cut out and start getting some seaming together because that looks like it'll just really go together pretty quick. So we'll see how that goes. So I don't need to cut out the skirt, but I did notice the ease and it says that the ease for the skirt is approximately six and a half inches. And I looked over and the ease on the jacket is approximately three inches. So I thought that might be relevant to y'all. So it's hard to see, but here are the pattern pieces laid out, except the sleeve. I need to just push that down uh, after I get all the rest cut out because I don't have that much room in my room. So I ended up using pieces one, two, three, four, eight, and nine. Um, so those are, I believe, all the ones that kind of go on the outside of the jacket. So those are the ones I'm cutting out today. I'm not worrying about the facings. So those are the ones I need, or if you are making this jacket and are using like a really expensive material for the outside and want like a matching but not as expensive material for the linings, this is what you'll need. So I'd estimate this is, I don't know, two and a half yards worth of material? Probably. Actually, I have a yardstick. I can answer that. So there's my yardstick. So yeah, you probably need two, maybe two and a half yards of material to cut out the A jacket. Which, and that's only cutting out the outside, which the pattern tells you that for this size you need, I don't think I can get it to focus, but the pattern tells me you only need like two and five eighths worth of material, and I don't see how you can get all of the facings you need cut out of that, so yeah, definitely take that with a, uh, I guess a grain of salt and go ahead and up that and get like an extra, maybe all the way up to like three and a half yards instead of two and five eighths, because that's... This is already kind of tight, and I can probably squeeze in a couple of uh, facing pieces in there, but that's, yeah, there's no way you're going to be able to cut everything you need out with 2 and 5 eighths yards. 
So these are all my pieces cut out and I just wanted to point out this is one of those patterns that has like multiple piece fours. It happens to a couple pieces in here, but you can see like the gradations from here goes just size 6, 10, and 14. And then there's another piece four that has um, like 12, um, 8, and 4. So just make sure when you're cutting out from the big piece of tissue paper, you're cutting out the size you need. So now what I'm going to do is make all of the marks. And you know what? I think I'm going to do it in Sharpie because I can. So I'm going to mark all of the marks and come back and start seaming some things together. So I thought this was the same thing in different languages, which is why I didn't look closer. But I'm glad I did now because down here, um, there's different eases for different parts of the body. So the ease for the waist is about three inches and the ease for the bust is about five and a half inches, which is interesting to note. Um, and that's kind of important to know. Uh, also, it will make me feel a lot better later when the ease around the waist is intentionally smaller than the ease around the bust. But also, like, I don't know, it doesn't really make sense to me. I mean, it does historically and, you know, historically the structure of these kind of garments, but the directions want you to insert a waist tape, which is meant for like a waist with high stress. So where it's kind of meant to shape you and uh, to give this fabric a good reinforcement against the tension of being pushed apart from your waist. Um, but yeah, if the ease is three inches and there's in theory going to be a, you know, a lot of extra room around the waist, why does this need a waist tape? Anyway, um, that's, I don't know, uh, maybe that's from a remnant from when this pattern was originally drafted, um, and when they remade it, they scaled it up a little bit to fit modern silhouettes that don't wear, you know, the Dior corset under everything, and we don't really wear girdles anymore. All right, anyway, so now I'm going to seam together, I think these, um, side front and, uh, back side seams, so this goes to, like, the center portion. So I'm just going to seam these together real quick and then, um, yeah. So here's the inside of the back. I also drew a line at the waistband before, or at the waistline before I actually like sewed this together. So here's the back. Um, I also went ahead and did up the backside seam. I think I'm going to not press all the seams because honestly, I just don't feel like getting my ironing board out because it needs to be oiled, but I can't be bothered right now. And it screeches like a ring wraith. We recently saw, um, Lord of the Rings in theaters. They did like a re-release, um, and oh my god, just the screeches were atrocious. It was an excellent experience. Highly recommend. Love seeing the extended edition in theaters, but oh my god, the screeches were just horrendous. So now I'm just going to pin the front to the back uh, and get that sewn together and then work. Okay, so the sleeves are a little confusing because the way that step 11 is worded kind of makes it seem like you're supposed to reinforce the dots on two places at the seam or on the sleeve, but you're really only supposed to do it at one. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reinforce and by that I just mean back tack down here a little bit. And this is the end of the sleeve. The sleeve head is up there. So I'm just going to back tack here a little bit and then stitch up here. Um, leave a tail long enough to tie a knot. So I'm going to get those stitched in. And then once that's stitched in, you're supposed to clip through to here or to this point, which is why it's reinforced there. Um, and you can kind of see it down here in this uh, drawing. And then you're supposed to clip. Um, the pattern does have a little bit of a slash going and you just continue that up all the way to a half inch down from the stitching line from the dart. So I'm going to do that. Uh, real quick and then I'm probably just gonna mount the sleeves on and then I think that's all I really need to do for the mock-up I didn't notice this the first time around but when I went to go pin this long seam on the sleeve um, I noticed that these pieces needs a little bit of easing though the way the directions want you to do it is basically just gather the long side um, either by they say by machine but honestly I think by hand would be easier for that small amount. Anyway, so I want you to gather it, then gather it down, and then stitch it. Um, I just kind of eased it in by hand, because I don't know if it's just the way that I um, sewed it, be or the way that I cut it, because I kind of did everything by eye, but uh, yeah, you can see a little bit of wrinkling here. I just found it easier to kind of ease it in by hand and play with it and just ease it the same way I would ease any curved seam. So that's what I did. So now I'm going to mount the sleeves on and then give it a try. And I think that's all I really need to do for the sake of this mock-up. So this is more or less what the final jacket looks like. I think it strangely looks better on camera than it does in person. Um, 
I think having the facing definitely will help with getting this kind of floofed out the way it's supposed to. I'm, I think it's cute. I definitely like it. I just don't think this is exactly right for this project because definitely needs a pointy collar, not a um, round collar. And I think this is meant to even be up like this. Um, I like how it came out. I like the pattern. I think it went together pretty well. Um, I just don't think this is the right pattern for this particular project. Um, I do like it though. Which makes me glad that I actually made the mock-up so I could see how it fits without having to cut into my three yards of fabric, which I only have three yards of the special fabric, so I don't want to waste any of it. Um, yeah, this was a fun uh, afternoon kind of project. Um, I like how it fits. I probably could have gone down to the 14, um, like if I wanted to wear this more like as a as a shirt, but the 16 or the 16 that I kind of made fits pretty well. I like it. Um, I do wish it had a little bit more like shape to it because in the, uh, let me see. So in the fashion drawing, this is obviously meant to be much more fitted and the fact that you're really supposed to put a waist tape in makes it seem like this is supposed to be much more closely fitting and a much more um, f just tailored jacket. So having it come out kind of this big, uh, especially over here, doesn't look as great on me. I'm sure if I just took it in and tailored it, it would work out, but then I probably won't be able to wear this in two weeks because I'll probably gain another 10 pounds. Um, I like the arm size, but this is a good like range of motion for most people. Um, I am way more expressive than that. Um, I also like having full range of motion of my arms, so I would probably raise the arm size a little bit, um, and that'll help me get a little bit more movement without this popping up. I don't want to have, a, have to do the Picard maneuver all day whenever I wear this. Um, yeah, I like it. I just don't think it's right for this project. And who knows, maybe I'll uh, make this coat for real one day. And here's what it's, it looks like when it's not pinned up the front. I just had it pinned, so I couldn't really do anything with it. And now that I look at it again, I do really like the back. Um, it actually reminds me a little bit about like, like 1760s, 1770s fashion. Yeah, which is kind of interesting. I don't know. But uh, I like the back. This is almost exactly what I'm looking for in the back, but I just don't like the front. I don't think the front is right for this particular project. So just a quick wrap up for this pattern. Uh, again, this isn't finished, this was just a mock-up, so I don't have any of the facings in, and I don't have any of the final hems or anything in. Uh, I really like it. I think it fits pretty true to size. I don't really like the cut. Um, it doesn't seem like that should be the original cut, and it definitely needs some tailoring, but I don't know if that was the original pattern, or if they kind of modded it up a little bit to adapt to the modern silhouette, because I don't know about you, but I don't wear a girdle. Almost nobody wears girdles anymore. Um, the real true, like, Dior new look, new look wasp waist really needed a corset, and there was, like, a brief resurgence of true corsetry in the 50s. Um, so maybe they just kind of adapted the pattern to a more modern silhouette because the closest we get to any of that is Spanx, um, which definitely gives you a different shape than what um, the undergarments worn in the 50s would have. But yeah, overall, I really like this pattern. I think it's cute, um, just not right for the project that I'm using it for. So I'm glad I figured that out now and not as I'm cutting into my very expensive fabric. So yeah, that's uh, it for this portion. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. I know it was different than the stuff that I normally do. Uh, let me know if you like this kind of different stuff or if you want, you know, my beginning to end all uh, thrown in there full uh, review and pattern tutorial. So let me know if you liked it and um, subscribe, maybe like, I don't know. That's the thing YouTubers say, but I'm not monetized yet. So it doesn't really do anything for me. It's a free country, do what you want. Um, also, you can give me a follow at Thread and Needlefish over on Instagram if you want to see some behind the scenes and some extras and things that don't make it to YouTube. You can probably expect to see more of this project because it doesn't have an actual deadline, so I won't get into a uh, 
just get everything done at 2 a.m. the night before, so this is just kind of a passion project for me. So you will definitely see more of it, um, if not here on YouTube, then definitely over at my Instagram, again, at Thread and Needlefish. So yeah, if you're interested in this sort of thing, then stick around, uh, keep an eye out for my next couple of uploads, and see you soon. Well, hello there. Is there something that you need? Is there something you're trying to tell me? Did you have a good nap? You just want to come get in the way? You just want to come rub your face on my door? Okay, you can do that. What do you want? You gotta tell me. Good girl. Brat.